Well, good evening and welcome to the CBOC meeting for August 26, 2020. If you would like to view this meeting in Spanish, please follow the link listed below. The CBOC will continue respecting orders from the governor of California, the health officer of the County of Riverside and guidelines of the Centers for Disease Control related to maintaining public health and safety at this time. Consistent with these orders and guidelines, this meeting will be held online only and there will be no physical meeting location open to the public. The committee encourages members of the public to join the meeting electronically. In order to submit your public comments electronically, please refer to the link at the bottom of the screen. Public comments will be accepted until the specific item of business to be transacted or discussed by the committee is considered. At this time, I would like to introduce Assistant Superintendent Sergio San Martin to provide this message in Spanish. Sergio. Thank you, Chair Fram. Uh, muy buenas tardes y bienvenidos a la reunión de la Junta del Comité de la Comunidad sobre bonos del, dos, del 26 de agosto del 2020. Si gustan ver esta reunión en español, siga el enlace de abajo en la descripción. La Junta respetará las, las recientes órdenes del gobernador de California, el oficial de salud del condado de Riverside y las órdenes del Centro de Control de Enfermedades. Esto es en relación con el mantenimiento de la salud y la seguridad pública. De acuerdo con estas órdenes y guías, esta reunión se llevará a cabo solo en transmisión en línea y no habrá un lugar físico de reunión abierta al público. Le recomendamos a los miembros del público que se una a la reunión electrónicamente. Para presentar sus comentarios públicos, siga el enlace en la parte de abajo de la pantalla. Se aceptarán los comentarios públicos durante la junta. Muchas gracias. Back to you, Mr. Fram. Thank you. Well, at 5.35 p.m., I would like to call the meeting of the CBOC uh, to order. First, I would like to thank the members of the committee and the public for understanding the, meet, the need to start this meeting an hour later than normal. It could not be helped, but, and it was, uh, was needed so that one of our members could attend another very important meeting. Uh, for public input, the committee will consider requests from the public to comment. Comments should be, should be limited to three minutes or less. If you wish to address the committee concerning an item already on the agenda, please indicate your desire to do so and submit your request electronically. You will have an opportunity to speak prior to the committee's discussion on that item. Pursuant to section 54954.2 of the government code, no action or discussion shall be undertaken on any item not appearing on the proposed agenda Except that, except that um, <laughs> members of the committee or staff may briefly respond to statements made or questions posed by persons exercising their public testimony rights. Discussion of items brought forward that are not on the agenda shall be considered for future agendas by the committee chair. So at this time, uh, I would like each one of the members of the committee to introduce themselves. And if we can start, um, uh, I am George Fromm and I am a member of the committee. And at this time, the committee chair, Mr. Kinnear. Richard, you'll need to unmute Mr. Kinnear. I did it. I'm Dale Kinnear and I'm a member of the committee. Okay. Uh, Mr. Nelson. Um, my name is Keith Nelson and I'm the uh, vice chair of the committee. Thank you. David Bristow. My name is David Bristow and I too am a member of the committee. Tina Grande Field. Uh, my name is Tina Grandy Field, and I'm a member of the committee. Terry Walling. Terry Walling, a member of committee. And Sarah Simpson. Hi, I'm Sarah Simpson, committee member. Okay. Are there any members of the committee that I did not catch? Yes. Anna. Uh, George, we have an attendee that's just showing a number. I don't know if you, we want to unmute him and confirm because they haven't submitted a comment to us. So 
do we want to ask if that person is here to comment or just listen in? I don't know if it's a, a it's a possible committee member that just logged into the different a wrong location. Uh, okay, who would who would that be? Richard, can you unmute that person and ask? All right, so they're they're talking is permitted, and I'm asking them to unmute. So the should prompt them what to do to unmute them. Uh, Sarah, if you can do the, uh, I see you raising your hand, go ahead and speak, but if you could use the uh, raise hand function. I was just already unmuted and I don't know if you noticed that Diane Kwanson has joined. Oh no, I had, oh, I had not. Diane Kwanson, welcome. And if you can introduce yourself. I'm Diane Kwasman and I'm a member of the committee. Thank you. Do we have anyone else? It's not like it at this point. Moving on to the first action item on the on the agenda, it is the approval of the minutes of May 26, 2020. Did everyone receive that and have a chance to review it prior to the meeting? Keith Nelson, you have a comment. Making a motion to approve the minutes. Okay, motion. Do I have a second? Tina Grande Field would like to second it. If you can, if you can unmute Tina. <laughs> I second the motion. Okay. Uh, comments or questions? I, I have one one comment. Um, just just a small thing on um, page three of eight at the top where it's talking in the first sentence, where it talks about uh, Brown Act. I believe that Brown Act should be capitalized rather than uh, small letters, because it is a particular act. That would be the only change that I, I would have for the minutes. I don't know, does anyone else have any changes, questions, comments? Okay. Seeing none, if we can We'll call the roll. Then uh, all those Ray, Ray. I guess we can do this visually if we don't have any. Um, we don't have any objections. We wouldn't have to do a roll call. So all those in favor of uh, approving the minutes, please raise your hand. Okay. Are there any opposed? Not 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 seeing any opposed. Then the minutes are of. The last meeting from May 26 are approved with that one one change. At this point, I would ask if there are any anyone on the call with us for public comments at this point. Gabby, do we have any any public comments? We have no public comments at the moment. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. From yes, um, point of order. Uh, there was a comment from um, Mr. Rubin regarding uh, roll call. Uh, thank you, Mr. San Martin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, I apologize. I was unable to mute myself, to unmute myself initially. Uh, unfortunately, the Brown Act rules for teleconferencing, which this meeting is, require a roll call vote um, for every instance of a vote. So I apologize for the inconvenience. Okay, thank you. Thank you for correcting, correcting that. We wanna make sure we're following the rules. So we, we will do a roll call on the on the minutes, um, Mr. Kinnear, Dale Kinnear, approval of the minutes. I approve. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Unmute, Mr. Nelson, please. Yes. Thank you, uh, David Bristow. I vote to approve. Thank you. Tina Grande Field. I approve. Thank you. Dan Quasman. I approve. Thank you. Terry Walling. I approve. Thank you. And Sarah Simpson. I approve. 
and George Fromm, I approve. So moving on to the next item on the agenda would be the uh, staff will present the Measure O project update. Gabby, do we have any public comments on this, on this agenda item? We have one public comment. Um, Anna, would you like to put the timer on? Or should I just move forward with the comments? Yes. Okay, I'll go ahead and read it. It says, Dear Measure O Committee, I think it would be in instructive for you to begin each of your meetings by reading the exact wording of the Measure O ballot initiative that voters approved. Here's the first three quarters of that text which met, which says Measure O funds will be used for, and I quote, to repair and upgrade Riverside schools, including deteriorating roofs, plumbing, and electrical systems, improve student safety, security, and seismic safety, upgrade classrooms, science labs, career training facilities, computer systems, and, and, and instructional technology to support student achievement in math, science, engineering, and skilled trades, and construct, acquire, repair classroom sites, facilities, and equipment." End quote. The measure explicitly says that the voters want this bond invested in facilities and facility upgrades specifically in order to support student achievement in math, science, engineering, and skilled trades. I was interested to hear that on the August 4th board meeting that the board approved the following project for Arlington High School using Measure O money. Construction of a biomed special education building, an auxiliary gymnasium, a concession restroom building, an expansion of bleachers at, at the track and field, and upgrades to the existing stadium field sports lighting, modernization of the Media Arts Academy building, administration building, student services building, and upgrades to the outdoor swimming pool and equipment. Combining this with the approved Measure O expenditures for Poly High School, which includes construction of a varsity baseball field, a varsity softball field, a new parking lot, and updates to the quad area, it appears that the district is vastly more interested in athletics and student achievement in math, science, engineering, and skilled trades. It is your job as an oversight committee to remember the will of the voters and use Measure O money to, and again, I quote directly from the ballot measure, to support student achievement in math, science, engineering, and skilled trades, end quote, and thank you. And that's the end of the comments. Thank you. Um, before before I, I did to fail to uh, give one reminder to the committee minor, many members, uh, we will use a similar format from our last committee meeting. Uh, so I ask uh, members of the committee uh, to ask to be recognized by uh, raising your hand on the chat feature. Um, remember the chat feature of Zoom, of the Zoom meeting should not be used for discussion on any topics that are on the agenda, but can be used if you need assistance with a technical, technical issue for your participation in, in the meeting. Thank you so much. Um, so we'll move on with the uh, staff project progress update. Thank you, Mr. Fram. I'm gonna share my screen, but before I do that, I'm gonna ask Richard to move um, one of the attendees uh, on the phone and ask Mr. Bob, Bobby Garcia, he's a, a member. Uh, we can move him to the panelist. Uh, is that possible, Richard? Uh, no, it's not, but because he's calling in from a, a landline, but I can uh, enable his phone to be able to unmute himself. Uh, so he, because he's calling in from a phone, the raised hand would not, I, I, it would not apply to him uh, since he's calling in from a phone, but he would be able to hit like star nine or star six in order to unmute himself. So if this group is okay with that, I can enable his ability to do that. I would just ask that uh, Mr. Garcia uh, choose opportune times and not uh, not try to talk over anyone else if he has if he has a comment. So, thank you. I think that will work just fine. Okay. So, staff presentation. Yes. Um, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Let's see. I can get two. And, 
All right, so um, I have on my screen and I can't see anybody. So if, if there's any questions, Mr. Fran, please jump in. Um, first, I want to thank our uh, staff for preparing this report. This is a progress report where we're at uh, as of um, June 30th and uh, this uh, completion of the summer. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna ask each uh, project manager to jump in and to give us, give us an update on their project and when that is completed on active projects, then I'll ask Ms. Tarana to jump in and give us the financial update from her, from her um, uh, perspective. So again, uh, as, as we are in a, in a new environment with COVID uh, back in March when our schools shut down, uh, one of the things that the governor did make clear that the essential workers were, uh, or construction workers are part of the essential workers. And, we were able to continue with construction. So we're, we're uh, very grateful and blessed that we were able to continue with construction. There's a lot of work that has happened since then while our schools were closed. And a lot of those projects you'll see as we give you an update. Uh, the projects that we're gonna present to you tonight are projects that are in construction uh, in their, or that there is some activity happening. I would like to also report that, not in this report because it's already completed, Sierra, the Sierra Middle School project has been completed um, and that is uh, already uh, been occupied by the site and so forth. So starting with Harrison Elementary, uh, I'm gonna ask um, Ms. Nadia Zian to jump on and to give us an update where we're at with Harrison. Nadia. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for having me today. Um, so the update on Harrison Elementary School, over the summer, we actually completed the construction of the single story five classroom building, as well as completed the new parking lot and drop off area. We also uh, completed the conversion of the three existing kindergarten classrooms that were converted into two classrooms to receive re new restroom facilities all new uh, finishes as well as HVAC and electrical systems. So all those items were completed over the summer. Uh, currently what is underway and under construction is the complete renovation of the existing administration building. Um, the administration building is scheduled to receive new HVAC systems, new electrical upgrades, um, all new finishes, um, a PA clock and speaker, all new low voltage systems as well. Uh, currently, if you go jump down over to some of the photos, um, and I apologize, I, I skipped ahead. So as you can see in the photo, uh, that is the new five classroom building that you see there on the left, um, along with the new parking lot and drop off pickup area. And on the right is just an example of one of the completed uh, new classrooms at the site as well. And I, I see that Keith Nelson has uh, has a question. Mr. Nelson? Okay, there it goes. I, yeah. I did have a question regarding the uh, special ed building. Yes. Are those um, special ed, like low autism effect classrooms? What was What makes them special ed was kind of my question. So currently Harrison Elementary School um, houses a special education program that's more towards uh, behavioral issues. All right, great, thank you. You're welcome. Um, if you scroll down just a little bit, um, I believe there are some additional photos that can be shared. Um, as, uh, as mentioned, um, the administration building, so you can see on the right, uh, that is the existing administration building. It's been completely demolished. Um, it's scheduled to receive all brand new finishes and upgraded facade to the building with new storefront, new uh, exterior landscaping. Uh, currently, as you can see, it's been demolished and uh, we are framing and working on rough-ins for all the electrical and low voltage systems. And that completes my update, unless someone has questions. Not seeing any, thank you. 
Thank you, Nadia. <clears throat> the next project is High Grove Elementary. And that's Mr. Eric Walker. Do you want to jump on, Eric? Hello, thank you for being here. Um, High Grove Elementary, I started at the beginning of the project um, last summer. And then um, we had another fellow take over, Phil Valdez, but um, I can still give you an update. We had a new two story building with new uh, 12 classrooms. They have upper grades upstairs, kinder downstairs, um, all new finishes, new playground. Um, and a new drop off area out in front of the new building for the kinder area. And then also during the project, the old existing classroom buildings were remodeled. And that was the project that we all went to and walked the one CBOC meeting, I believe it was two meetings ago before the COVID uh, happened. And these are some examples of the pictures of the classroom, the new classroom with the new um, furniture that was purchased for them. New HVAC units were installed on all the existing buildings. And this is um, some of the new concrete area at the bottom there that goes to their new lunch shelter area that was refinished. Move down, that's some new landscaping that was done there. Um, this is one of the workrooms in the new building. And as well, you can see the new kinder area with the grass and the play area that's out in the um, quad area or the inside of the, the building. That's just an overview or an area view of the existing site. Does anybody have any questions on this project? Yes, continue. Okay, Jefferson Elementary was one of my projects or still is one of my projects. And this one, we're getting uh, six new classroom buildings, which is complete. We are working on the exterior um, items, still completing the landscape, some of the concrete and hardscape areas. The new building uh, is being occupied by teachers already. Currently, they're teaching from their classrooms. And then as well, we um, did a modernization and went through the complete site with all the buildings. We're in the last phase, which are the last two buildings to be completed. Right now they're in the demolition phase. And um, we did the kinder wing, the old kinder wing. This, these pictures here are the VCT flooring that was upgraded in the um, admin area. And then if you see the picture to the right with the planning, that is the new landscape area in the kinder where the kinder building is the new six classroom building, as well as they're getting uh, three new play structures and a um, bike track area for them to ride around. We could move down Sergio. That's another view of the planning looking at the new building in the background, the entire kinder area is secured with a new fence to close that off from the other areas of the site. Uh, the picture on the left is the upgraded um, admin restrooms that were remodeled. Go ahead and scroll down. And that's just an overview of the site, the existing site, the yellow areas where the new building was um, placed on site. Does anybody have any questions on Jefferson? As well as on that side, we did get all new HVAC equipment also for the classrooms. Mm -hmm. Madison Elementary is my ongoing project also. This one here, we're getting a uh, new five classroom building with three workrooms for the teachers. We're about 80% complete with this building. As well, we did a complete remodel of all of the existing classrooms, new carpet, new paint, exterior of the buildings, new paint. The kinder area, the old kinder playground, which will be the TK now, got an impact fence because it is on a major street off of Madison. Uh, the picture to the left is the old K through um, third grade wing with the new stairwell and new ramp that comes down as they were uh, preparing the flat work. Picture on the bottom is just showing the roofing on the new building with the new AC pads. The picture on the right is the new kinder um, drop off area with the new bus, bus turnaround and the ADA access for the kids path of travel to um, access the site. Please scroll down Sergio. The pictures on the right and the left were just um, 
preparation and form work when we were doing the flat work and hardscape on site. And then as well, I don't know if I mentioned in the remodel of the existing classrooms, there was all new carpet, the libraries, every existing classroom with the exception of the portables were touched with paint interior and exterior. And then currently we are working on the admin and the uh, multi-purpose room remodels. Or any questions on this project? Hang on, we do have one question from Keith Nelson. This this question isn't specific to this project, but um, we we mention often we've upgraded or replaced havoc units, and I'm just curious in all these. Um, upgrading of schools are we anticipating any energy savings over time because of new energy efficient havocs or other upgrades you're doing to these uh sites when we do upgrade our hva system hvac systems they are a higher standard a better sear rating so yes they do on that as well as our measure o projects there were projects that went on in the past which were our Prop 39 projects that they have upgraded lighting, LED lighting in a majority of our schools, as well as all of, um, a lot of them got HVAC upgrades that didn't, haven't been touched yet. So yes, there are a lot of energy upgrades on these sites, but a lot of it was done prior to us starting the Measure O. Thank you. You're welcome. Jackson Elementary, Nadia, is this your project? Yes, thank you. Um, so a lot of work went on over the summer at Jackson Elementary School. Um, the work that was completed over the summer, um, part of the, uh, the NPR building and the administrative administration building, uh, those buildings received new HVAC systems, new roofing, lighting upgrades, PA and clock speaker upgrades, as well as data upgrades. Um, as far as site work over the summer, we also upgraded all the existing sewer lines on the site, all the existing gas lines, and also installed the new storm drain all throughout the site. Uh, we also completed the relocation of 15 portables on site that we needed for interim housing during construction. Uh, currently, we have two buildings, classroom buildings that are under construction. It is six classrooms. Those two existing buildings are receiving new HVAC systems, new roofing, new ceiling tiled, electrical upgrades, as well as um, some light modernization in the uh, classrooms themselves. Um, also underway, which started at the beginning of the summer, is the construction of the new two-story eight classroom building. Uh, that is ongoing work right now. We are working on the grading operation for that and installing all the underground utilities to the new building. We are also working on the grading for the new parking lot uh, pickup drop off area. Um, as you can see on the screen, um, the, there on the top uh, left hand corner, you see the completed interim housing portable. So those were all relocated for temporary housing. And on the bottom right hand corner, you can see the grading operation that's in preparation for the new building. Uh, here you can see um, the uh, administration building on the top left hand corner. So that received all new ceiling tiles due to the work that took place. Again, they received new um, fire alarm PA clock speakers, all new low voltage new HVAC systems and new roofing. We also upgraded the restrooms in those facilities too, uh, received all new fixtures, new tiling. Um, and then on the very far right, you can see some of the trench work that took place for the installation of the new gas line. Any questions? Oh, apologies. I've, um, on the uh, top right uh, left hand corner, that's the NPR. So again, same as administration building, um, uh, retrofitted the light fixtures, uh, new HVAC systems, as well as new roofing. On the right hand side, you can see that a lot of the demolition work has taken place in the existing permanent building where they are receiving uh, uh, light modernization in those rooms, as well as receiving new HVAC systems and roofing. Thank you, Nadia. You're welcome. 
<clears throat> this is a rendering of the new building, right? Yes, yes. All right, Magnolia Elementary in this. this that, one, uh, is that one's mine as well, Sergio. Um, over the summer at Magnolia Elementary School, we completed the relocation of four portables as well. And those portables are for interim housing. We also completed the installation of the majority of the sewer system on the site was replaced. And the construction of the new um, single story five classroom buildings started. So that school is receiving two new buildings, five classrooms each, which totals 10 new classrooms. Uh, that work is currently underway as well. Uh, grading the building pad is complete. We are working on installing all the underground sewer plumbing and electrical. We are also working on the trenching for the footings and setting the rebar inside of the footings as well to prepare for the concrete. So that one is well underway as well. And um, if you scroll down, I can explain some now, of that. I, I, just, I just have a quick question. When you relocate temporary buildings, yes. it, do, we, do we hire out or does district staff personnel do those relocations? Those are typically, that's, that's contracted. That contracted. is contracted. Um, there's, uh, they, the foundations need to be approved by DSA. There's a lot of low voltage fire alarm upgrades and ADA upgrades. Um, so those buildings, even though they're temporary, do need to meet all ADA. And so there's actually quite a bit of work that goes into relocating them. So it's typically multiple subcontractors that work on just the single relocation of one portable. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And it's work that is bid, goes through the bidding process. Yes, correct, yes. Thank you. Mm. Mm. Um, and on the top uh, left hand corner, you can see the four portables. Those are the ones that were relocated. Um, on the right hand side, you can see that there's fresh concrete pour because some of the trenching that we did for the new gas line. And on the bottom, you can see the uh, grading for uh, the new uh, two classroom buildings. And you can see a lot of the utilities have been already uh, trenched and covered up with uh, dirt in preparation for the concrete. Any more questions on Magnolia? Okay. Adams Elementary, Nadia? Yes. Um, <clears throat> Adams Elementary, uh, during the summer, we had more portable relocations. So we relocated eight of the portables on site for interim housing. Uh, we completed a lot of ADA uh, work that needed to take place um, in both the parking lots. There's an upper and a lower parking lot, so that was completed. We also worked on the installation of a brand new gas line and meter upgrade for the gas on the site. Uh, we worked also on a lot of electrical infrastructure that needs to go into an electrical upgrade at that site. Um, we also began the construction of the new five classroom kindergarten uh, building as well as the new uh, parking lot. So the grading for that is also underway. Uh, currently we're working on all the underground utilities for that as well as also the trenching and rebar for the in preparation for the concrete footings for the building. Um, so as you can see on the top left hand corner, uh, we have uh, the portables that were relocated, uh, left hand corner as well. Um, the post that you see sticking up on the ground that was, um, we are installing fencing there as well. So that has not been completed, um, when, was not completed when this photo was taken. Um, and if you can scroll down. So on the top left hand side, you will see um, this is all the um, underground infrastructure for the new electrical utility yard that's going to be going in for the electrical upgrade. So we'll have all that equipment there. Um, and on the right hand side, um, you'll see uh, the new building area. And as you can see, the grading is very well underway as well as all the utilities are um, under um, the soil for the restrooms and facilities as well. And, um, and I did forget to mention that over the summer, we also replaced all the existing asphalt paving on the 
um, in the playground area. So that was all removed and replaced. So it has all new asphalt paving as well as striping. Any questions on Adams? Thank you, Nadia. Mm -hmm. A sunshine school. Hi, this is uh, Gabby. Um, so uh, with Sunshine Project, this is a much smaller scale project, but um, one of the big components that started uh, over the summer is the utility updates that are needed for the new buildings uh, portable that's being installed in the rear of the of the site. This 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 uh, uh, site houses the California Children's Services Program, which is um, managed by the county, and it serves uh, students of special needs all over the county, including our school district. Um, aside from the building that was recently installed, a new gas meter has been updated in the site and a, a rolling gate has, a new rolling gate has been included or added as well. And uh, paving has been completed in the front parking lot. Uh, next page, please. Uh, this this uh, these photos show the the laying down of the rear portable that has been newly installed that will be used for California Children's Services. Um, the I'm sorry the top the the left one and the top right one shows a portable. The bottom right it while it's a little bit on, on the left hand side you could see the new rolling gate that's been installed. Um, and that's going to be uh, uh, it's going to have restricted access. Okay, next next slide. This is just a, uh, a overview of the of the site. It shows uh, yeah. So yeah, th this this uh, shows uh, how the site looked like before, but where the portable I'm sorry, where the bins are located in in the rear section of that parking lot. That's where the new building has gone and been placed. The the playground that's shown in front of there that has. Uh, all been graded and a new uh, playground is going to be installed there. The shade structure is remaining though, the, and the playground should be installed next month. Uh, this is this one shows a really good, uh, it's a good illustration that shows all the work that's going to be done. Um, this, all the orange stuff is where the modernization is going to be taking place. So it's going to be like new carpet, paints, lighting. And in the very front portion of the school, there's going to be an expansion uh, to provide a new entrance that's more, uh, provides more security and it just looks nicer from the front in general. And this is renderings showing how uh, that front is going to be expanded and with a new entrance, a, a new ADA uh, uh, upgrades as well. And this provides you a view of the where the new portable building is going to be located in the rear. And in addition to that, there's going to be a new landscaping in the front. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's it for the last slide from this. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Gabby. Any questions? All right. Uh, jumping to Poly High School. And uh, is this Anna? Poly High School is me. Um, on this side, it's it's been built on and changes and a lot of utilities done through the campus. So there were a lot of issues with ADA compliance and slopes and grades, stairwells. So the entire center of the campus has been gutted. All the concrete and all the ramps, stairs, uh, handrails access, fire access is all being redone as well as the underground utilities that have been in poor condition as far as uh, fire lines, gas lines, irrigation, uh, landscape, and um, that will all be redone and new. So we will not have any more issues and breakage um, on site with these, which has been a problem in the past. And then as well with the upgrades, it's a kind of a beautification where we're getting some shade structures for the, uh, the kids, the students on site. They will have areas to congregate with seating walls and amphitheater style seating for them to uh, sit on during uh, lunch, items like that. Um, the picture on the left is an area where you can see the slope there. 
is uh, where the amphitheater seating is going to go on this one and a new stairwell coming down and a ramp for the kids to access from the top level to the lower levels. Uh, on the bottom area, you can just see some of the grading that was taking place. All the complete area, all the concrete was removed and is being installed new. Um, as well, you can see the old stairwell has been demoed in the middle there that used to come down off of the library area. And all that is being redone with new ADA compliant stairs and um, ramps. The bottom two pictures are right picture and bottom picture are just uh, pictures of the utilities um, being dug and installed throughout the site. And the next one, the left uh, top picture is the new handicap ramp that comes up to the admin building or actually comes out of the admin building and comes down for uh, wheelchair access. To the right of the uh, green fence is the, the new fire access for the fire department that comes up to the middle of the school to access the center of the quad area. The middle one to the right of that picture is the footings for the new shade structures. And they actually got the steel in those today, or actually yesterday, and they're welding up the, the rest of the structure tomorrow for the one of the, the shade structures on the north end of the campus. The picture to the right is just another footing for a seating wall. And then the left side is the ADA upgrades we did for the handicap parking and leveled out the, um, the access for the handicap and wheelchair access that comes off of the handicap parking. The picture in the middle um, to the right of that is uh, a building 100 that was kind of clustered and had three makeshift classrooms in it that has been demolished and is being remodeled to become a flex space multi-use area for the site. It'll be approximately 900 square feet for the site to have principals meetings, uh, staff meetings, and use for assemblies and possibly testing on site. The next, that's an overview of our, our area. And this is an overview of some of the existing uh, conditions that will be out there now with a, a picture of some of the overhead and the entry porthole was the, the last picture. But yeah, the blue area is one of the shade structures you can see there, that's in front of the amphitheater. And then out in front of the admin, it's not really shown, but the administration building where the, the black sidewalk is, is gonna be another shade structure to the right of the library and in front of the admin. Yes, right there. Next slide, and that's an entry of the, or a picture of the new entry porthole with all of the, the new columns getting redone and new gates um, to allow, this is the main access for students to come in off the student parking lot, as well as getting all the ADA upgrades along the, the area of the new entry porthole. Do we have any questions on this site? I see any, let's keep moving. No, hold on, Mr. Nelson has a question. It's really a comment. I, I'm really happy to see the improvements that will allow the special needs classes to have a, a freer access to the community lunch areas for greater integration at the school. I think that's a, a real positive move. Um, the old quad kind of prevented the free flow of access to allow um, a lot of the special needs classes down to lunch areas. Right, so I right. think that's a positive. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, these next set of projects are, are projects that are in line that are uh, right now, are we preparing to go into bidding? Uh, they're just, uh, we've uh, completed all the, the entitlements, the approvals from the division state architect and prepping to move these into bidding. So um, we're not gonna go into detail on Alcott. Uh, let's see. Uh, as I'm scrolling down, Mon Monroe is another project that's getting ready also for bidding and for construction this spring. And I'll jump fairly quickly on these. Fremont Elementary is the next one in line. And we'll go into- into Mr. Joe, uh, Keith Nelson has a question or a comment. Okay. No, I was, I put my uh, hand down. Oh, okay, thank you. Right. Sounds good. We'll go into detail as well when we start moving into these projects or at another meeting, or if you would like me to stop and go through the scope of work, we can also do that. 
Um, Longfellow is then also in line to going to bidding this uh, spring. On this particular one, the activity that has, the major activity that has been completed is uh, we just purchased, completed purchasing, acquiring two properties. And these two properties are here where my, my little pointer is. Uh, there's a cul-de-sac and then there's these two single family homes. We just completed acquiring those properties. Uh, we are relocating those tenants that live there. In fact, one of the tenants already moved out. Uh, the next tenant is uh, scheduled to move out fairly soon. Part of our process through CEQA in our uh, mitigation plan is to, uh, because these homes are historical homes, to offer these homes for relocation or for a contractor to purchase them and relocate them somewhere else. If there is no interest in relocating, then we would move forward into demoing, but these are part of the project. Uh, you can see here on this rendering that um, um, where these homes sit is where here where my pointer is. Um, that will be part of the new parking and drop off area. The new buildings are in blue. There's kindergarten buildings and an admin building. Um, this site doesn't have parking on site. This would be the first time it's gonna have parking on site in a drop off area. Current existing parking is off site across the street from the school. So this is a major, major improvement on this project. Again, this is getting ready for bidding and to go into construction this summer. Uh, uni high school, middle school is also getting ready to, to bid to start construction fairly soon in the spring and summer. And uh, let's see, Arlington High School. Uh, this is also our next high school coming up uh, for construction. Um, this one, uh, we're also prepping to start construction fairly soon. As soon as this uh, winter break, we will may start in the, in the aquatics area and then move into the rest of the campus where there is, um, major improvements, a brand new building, uh, a renovation of an existing building, completing the, the, the stadium so that the site can have their own graduations and major events and competitions on site. There is also a practice auxiliary gym, brand new uh, buildings being built and renovations and um, curve appeal throughout the campus. Again, I'm going fairly quickly on these projects because these are, have not started construction we're prepping to go further and or to go into construction fairly soon, starting in the spring. The Casablanca Neighborhood School, this one, the activity has taken place. We have a site approval from the Department of Education. Uh, we just hired the architect. We have assigned the architect as Geo Architects, and we will, we will soon start community meetings and start the, uh, the planning phase uh, of this project, which is beginning with meeting with the community, putting together the design team and committee meetings, um, setting up uh, committees to move into schematics and really de defining uh, the project description and building the programming of this school, as this is a brand new school in Casablanca. Again, this project, this school, this neighbor had a school 50 years ago. We're bringing back that school back again as a brand new school. So there's going to be a lot of activities coming up soon. Um, this committee will be invited to the committee meetings as we move forward with these neighborhood schools. This is the location on the heart of Casablanca of that new school. This is just a rough rendering of a conceptual when we were going through the, the CEQA process. Um, this will change. This is not the, the, the layout or the footprint, but this is a more of a conceptual um, uh, interpretation of the new elementary that will go there. East side, uh, great news on the east side neighborhood. This is the, the blue outline here shows what is the east side neighborhood. Um, as of this month, we have also assigned the architect of record for this project. The architect is PBK Architects. As of today, we have purchased eight properties um, uh, out of 23 properties that we're looking to purchase. Uh, we own today eight properties, one in, in escrow closing in the next month or so, making it 10 and continuing to work with property owners that are interested in selling the properties. Uh, we're also uh, have engaged to move forward with CEQA. We're starting that process now that we have the architect in place. There will be a lot of movement, a lot of activity through community meetings. And again, you will be invited to attend and participate in, in those 
community meetings as we form the design team and committees as this project begins the initial stages of of, uh, of defining and programming the, the new school. The, the third school, Spring Mountain Ranch, and this is an area where there is a lot of development. Uh, sing, um, this community is growing with single family homes. Over 3,000 new homes are being built there. We own 13 acres uh, on right where that blue uh, area is. Uh, we have a uh, Department of Education site approval to put this, to uh, use this, this site for a new school. Uh, SQL has been completed and we have also assigned the architect of record for this project. This is Runo Clark Architects. They are the architect of record. We are also, there was gonna be some, a, a lot of activity happening in terms of community meetings, uh, the design team and forming committees to move into designing and building the educational specifications and the programming of this project. So a lot of activities, we are uh, very excited of all the work that's happening. Um, I will now ask Tarana to jump in and help us with the finances and give us an, a, a, um, an overview of the finances. Uh, before she jumps in, I would like to just you know, express again my gratitude and just how blessed we are with having this incredible team of project managers. I mean, they went fairly quickly on a summary on their projects. Um, at a previous district that I worked in in Orange County, we had less projects than what we're handling here. And we had over six project managers handling the multitude of projects. And keep in mind that, you know, these existing schools are modernization projects, but also new construction happening at these sites, which is just doubles the work, a lot of the activity. Uh, a lot of these um, projects are uh, the, the investment that, that is being put in our schools is keeping people in, uh, working since March. A lot of millions of dollars and hundreds, hundreds of people working throughout this COVID process. So we are, again, very proud of what's been going on. Uh, excited and, and grateful for the, the residents of Riverside who have made this happen through Measure O and grateful with you as a committee who has been part uh, of this process since day one and you see the fruits of what we're doing. And again, we're just very excited. So with that, I'm gonna move to, um, uh, Tarana, do you want me to go to the front summary page? Is yeah, that if we may go to page one, please. Okay. Uh, actually, slide two after the cover. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing and share again because otherwise I'm, it's gonna take forever to scroll. So you can start um, as I do this. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, good evening. Um, it's, a, it's a pleasure to see you all. Uh, I hope you're all doing well. I'm excited to give you an update regarding the financial section of the uh, Measure O program. On page one, as you can see, um, uh, there has uh, been a lot of activity, as Sergio mentioned. There are eight projects in construction and nine projects in the planning stage. So the district is spending approximately eight and a half, eight to eight and a half million dollars per month. Um, and that's going to get even um, faster as additional projects go into construction. So um, on slide one, you see the activity on the bar chart on the right. There is no change to the uh, pie chart on the left because no additional bonds have been issued. Today, 275.9 million has been generated. Uh, next slide, Sergio. Uh, no, page two. Yeah, right there. Sorry. Yeah, right here. Okay, so the bar chart. 275. A million has been generated today. Um, that includes the uh, uh, funds that were generated to the two bond series of 269 million plus uh, interest of 6.4 million. Um, as of the end of June, 90 million 320 has been expended and 185 million is remaining to be um, spent on these additional projects that are currently budgeted. So all of these funds are budgeted. Now, Sergio, I'm sorry, but I have to take you to page 89. Mm -hmm. We're going to the financial section. Okay. Any questions on page one regarding the revenue? Okay. On page 89, um, uh, we've updated the projects uh, whose uh, budgets have changed 
slightly, slightly, and as Sergio mentioned in the beginning, Sierra is a completed project. So as projects get completed, we've added a new section to the end of the report where the completed projects will be reflected so that you always have a history of the program from the inception. So on page um, 89, there have been some changes to the budget. It includes the planning budgets for the three neighborhood school projects, as well as the updated construction budgets for the projects that are under construction. Okay. And these are the projects that are funded from the first and second uh, series of the bond, the, the uh, estimated amounts that will be funded from the first and second series of the bonds. Okay. I believe there's a question from Ms. Sure. Yes, Sarah, sorry. Sure. Go ahead, Sarah. She's muted. Oh. Richard, can you help on mute? Sarah Simpson. There. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. So um, maybe you answered right in what you said at the very end, but why is the planning um, allocation for North not on this list? That is, I mean, we've not included that, but that is part of the first and second bond series or the, the measurable funds that will be used for that project. Okay. North, the planning of North is one of the projects that is going to be uh, done from the, from the current, uh, from all the bond series that will be issued under measure up. So maybe um, if I understand the question, um, um, this, this report reflects as of June 30th and uh, no, no measure of funds have been expended at North High School yet. That's why it's not on the report. Is that, does that answer the question? But um, as the project progresses, it, we're, at the next report, you will see the high school uh, project in terms of budget and expenditures since we'll, uh, now that we have the architect. Yeah, and we have included the description of that project in this report. So you've seen the, the North project that has been added in here and I can refer you back to. May I, may I follow up, Mr. Fromm? Sure. Yes, absolutely. Okay. I'm just trying to understand if we've been consistent in how we've been reporting. Is it, it doesn't make sense that North is in the um, has its own page and doesn't appear here, unless I mean there are other schools that are in that same category. I just don't understand. There's a number. There's an amount. So I'm just not understanding what gets you on this list because. I think you'll see later, it's also missing. North High School is missing from the next list also. It's like it, it and also at our last meeting, the STEM High School at UCR was still listed under expanded projects and as site assessment. And now it's disappeared from this list, but it is on the next one. So I'm just, I'm sure there might be an explanation, but I couldn't, understand. I couldn't make the, the detailed reports match with these. So just help, help. That's all. May I answer the question? So the financial activity is based on what is spent from Measure O funds that have been generated today. So anytime there's a penny spent from Measure O, because this is a cumulative report and it tracks all the revenue from Measure O, uh, those, those activities are reflected in here. So the, the monies that have been spent on the STEM project are reflected on page uh, 92. However, it's not in here because no additional funds are budgeted for that project at this time. It's a project that's been deferred to when the district obtains state funding. Uh, North as well, there is no activity on North so far. Um, you know, the district hasn't even started the design plans on it. So there has been no expenditures for that project. Once you see expenditures in a budget that's created for the planning, it will be reflected on this sheet as well as the follow-up sheet uh, on pages 91 and 92. Pages yeah. 91 and 92 are meant to show you any project at the district that has used measure O funds in the details of that. I see Ruben Brand has, has a question or a comment. I do, thank you, Mr. Chair. I apologize for interrupting and I'm glad that uh, Ms. Alam was able to uh, hopefully answer the question of Ms. Simpson. I'm gonna raise um, a point of uh, procedure here, a point of order if I could, Mr. Chair. Uh, one of the 
uh, one of your board members, one of your committee members has raised some questions about whether this meeting is being conducted in uh, compliance with the Brown Act on a couple of uh, points. One, as to the standard posting notice, and two, as to whether members of the public can observe the meeting and or provide comment. Uh, if I could, Mr. Chair, indulge you and the rest of the committee to call just a brief recess, maybe three or five minutes, so that I could talk to Mr. San Martin offline um, and see if I can resolve this issue before we continue any further. I'm sorry to do this. I know it's a little bit irregular, but I would prefer to, to just make sure that we're all um, in compliance with the law. Okay, we will take a, take a brief, let's do five minutes, and then we will come back. So it is currently 6.33, we will uh, rejoin at 6.38. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Do you want to call, call me on my cell phone? Yes, please. Do you have my cell number? No, would you? Uh, <laughs> I have uh, someone's cell number. I am going to text my number to them and they can pass it on to you. Ruben, I have your cell phone number. I will conference both the surgeon and myself in. Thank you, I appreciate that.
Okay, Mr. Chair. Um, I think we went a little bit over your five minutes. I apologize for that. Will you let me know when uh, you're ready and the rest of the committee is ready for me to address you? You're still on mute, Mr. Chair, I'm sorry. There you go. Yes, let, let's go ahead and proceed. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, uh, I regret to inform you that uh, I'm, I've asked that the meeting be um, adjourned for the time being and reconvened uh, with the uh, proper posting through some inadvertent error, um, the instructions for the public uh, to be able to log on to the meeting and observe and participate if they chose um, does not appear to have been posted in a readily accessible place. Um, and out of an abundance of caution, although there are no action items on your agenda this evening, I, I am gonna recommend to staff and to you, Mr. Chair, that uh, we adjourn this meeting and um, have staff uh, poll, poll your availability for a properly noticed uh, meeting at a later time. Yes, that is absolutely the uh, the right thing to do if the public was not given the, the proper notice or availability to this meeting. Um, so with that, uh, I would uh, apologize to all of the members of the committee who, um, who joined us this evening. Uh, I will ask staff to uh, Please get out a poll to the entire committee as soon as possible and, uh, and so that we could get this meeting rescheduled with the proper notice for the public and with proper instructions so the public can participate uh, in the future. And at this point, then any of the action, the action, the only action that we took was approving the minutes. We would have to redo that um, at our next meeting so everyone could be, could be prepared for that. So. Again, please accept my sincere apologies to everyone. And uh, at this point at 6.49 p.m., we will adjourn our meeting. Thank you everyone for your participation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you members of the committee. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you.